In the New Testament, the love of God is unconditional. You do not have to do something for God to love you. God just loves you unconditional. He loves you from the beginning. God did not love you because you got born again and you are now serious in church. God loved you before you even get born again. And the Bible says whenever you are afraid, there is no love involved. Because perfect love casts away what? Fear. I want to ask a rhetorical question. Why is it that in the prophetic these days, people are afraid of attending prophetic meetings, especially people who know that they have committed a sin, especially men who know that they are married and they still have two girlfriends. They avoid prophetic meetings because they do not want to come to a prophetic meeting so that at the end of the day, they will be a victim of those meetings. They have done everything to stay away from prophetic meetings. Why? Because they don't want to be victims of such meetings. They are afraid when they come, the prophet of God will point out their sons. So what is the mind of Christ about pointing out people's sins in public as a prophet? What is the mind of Christ about judging people immediately and in public? What do Jesus have to say about judging people in public? Now, let me read you a scripture. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel, the chapter 16, verses 4. 1 Samuel 16, 4. Okay. He says, And Samuel did that which the Lord speak, All right. and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? The Lord has given Samuel a prophetic message to come to Bethlehem. And when Samuel got to the entrance of the city of Bethlehem, the Bible said the elders of the city met Samuel outside the gate and asked him, Have you come in peace? The elders were trembling, and they were asking Samuel, have you come in peace? These are the elders trembling. And not only some were, the prophets of old, whenever the congregation or the people sees them, they begin to tremble. Because whenever they see them, they have seen judgment. These are prophets who appear, and whenever they appear, they appear with the judgmental message of God. They are coming to judge the people. You see Elijah, wherever Elijah appeared, people were trembling. If a man can slaughter 400 prophets in a day with their repenting, maybe pre-adventure on the 10th person the man will have mercy on the rest of the 390 and say what i want to do is that you join me it was a good deal but elijah said you all die and you should understand that the 400 false prophets of Baal. it was not everybody who was into it deeply some were being trained and some were being forced just like these days there are people that have been forced to worship other gods does that make you forced if elijah know how to preach a salvation message after that contest most of the prophets from Baal would have joined him so these are prophets that whenever they appear they appear with a message that condemns kills and destroys the people so they were the kind of prophets sinners run away from when you are a sinner and you see them you must run away when god gave an instruction that no one to touch any spoil in Jericho. The Bible say Akan took some. The Bible say Akan was killed with his whole family and lineage, including the animals. Why would one man sin destroy everybody related to him? If you commit murder, you are the only one who goes to prison. Your children are innocent. Your wife is innocent. All your loved ones are innocent. It's only you who who faces the consequences? But Moses could not even plead for the rest of the family. He brought them from the camp and they were stoned to death. So these were people that when you sin and they are coming, you are trembling, you are shaking, you want to die. Because meeting them is equal to death. It's better you die before meeting them. Because if you meet them, you will definitely die. So when someone was at the gates of Bethlehem, the city gate, the Bible said the elders of the city mobilized themselves and they met him trembling because they know that whenever the man of God is coming, he comes with a message that judges them. And they know they are not right. They know they are not righteous. They know they were men. So the Bible said they came to him at the city gates trembling and they asked him, have you come in peace? Are you here in peace? Are we safe? How can a prophet reduce himself to that extent. There are many learned men, they don't come to a prophetic church because they are afraid that the young prophet will call them out of the public, sit them in front of them and disgrace them. They are afraid of what the young prophet will do or say to them. They know they are not safe. They know they are in trouble. So you see the young man who is a learned man and you discover that the prophetic gathering is now a gathering full of jokers and people who have nothing to lose, people who have no image to protect, people who have no name to protect. So the man of God, prophetic ministry is now reduced to those categories of people. Do you know why? Because the man of God have reduced his prophetic ministry. It is so full, it's full of judgment and catching of sinners to understand that the sinners no longer want to come close. I'm not endorsing sin. Nobody wants sin. Even the ones sinning don't want it. No one wants sin. No one endorses sin. But we must look at it again. As a prophet, what must you do 
to change the narratives of these days. Can the prostitutes come to your church? Very happy. So in the case of Samuel, the people were trembling on the ground. They were trembling because of the arrival of the prophet of God, prophet Samuel. Let's look at the case of Jesus. Mark 2, 15. Mark chapter 2, verse 15. All right. It says, mm -hmm. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. 16. It's okay. Many what? Many followed him. Many publicans and sinners. Now, someone will say, Prophet David is supporting sir. This is your master. This is your savior. The Bible says, it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in, in his levy's house. Many publicans, the publicans were sinners. And the Bible qualified and sinners also sat together with him, together with the disciples. For they were many, and they followed him. They were many. The Bible is, is still stressing on the fact that they were many. Why would sinners feel comfortable sitting with Jesus? But that same sinner is not comfortable meeting someone. The sinner is comfortable sitting with Jesus, but that same sinner don't want to meet the prophet. A man will commit fornication and will prefer to go to Jesus than to go to the prophet. Because he knows that when he goes to Jesus, Jesus will not crucify him. But he, when he goes to the prophet, the prophet will finish him. So, one of the reasons why people are afraid of visiting prophetic churches is because of some of these things. So what is the mind of Christ about the sinner in church? The mind of Christ about the sinner in the, in the prophetic church. What is the Lord Jesus saying concerning the sinner in the prophetic church? Read Matthew eleven nineteen from. Matthew eleven nineteen. Yes. He says, mm -hmm. The son of man came eating and drinking. All right. And they say, Behold, a man glutinous, All right. and a wine biber, mm -hmm. a friend of publicans and sinners. All right. But wisdom is justified of her children. So, he's saying that they were calling Jesus a friend of publicans and sinners. sinners. Why? Because in Mark 2.15, he was seated with the publicans and the sinners. And the Bible said they were very many. If your church is not full of sinners, you are not yet a pastor. You are not yet a New Testament pastor. Prophet, I know you are anointed. I know you are called. But until you change how you approach your prophetic messages, your church will continue to be empty. People would rather prefer to consult you in private than in public because they know that God cannot trust a message to you. There are some messages God cannot even trust in the hands of some prophets because if the Lord trusts it in the hands of that prophet, they will blow the trumpet. There are prophets, they lack the ability to keep quiet. They lack the ability. They don't know how to keep a confidential message information. I have told you and I'll say it again. It is not everything you see, you see. There are the things you see, some of the things you see, you are not allowed, you are not permitted to say them. You must keep quiet. You are not supposed to say them. Why? Because saying them means you will cause more harm. It's better to keep quiet than to say them. There are some prophecies you don't give. It does not mean you are afraid. It means you are mature. That is why I said every member deserves a mature prophet. If you are attending a prophetic church, at least make sure the prophet is a mature prophet. Assuming there is a CEO who many people are looking up to, and then the CEO attended a prophetic service, and I called the CEO up, and I said, stand up. And the CEO will stand up. And I said, who is Ajoa? My worker. Who is Afia? My worker. Who is Mavis? My worker. Who is this? My worker. I mentioned five people names. And after I'm there mentioning the five people names, I said, why did you sleep with all of them? And there are people, he said, he's one of the prominent people in the society, and people are looking up to him. Now, don't tell me the Lord asks you to say it. Because even sometimes the Lord is concerned about our presentation. Our presentation matters a lot. And it's very, very important what we say and how we present the message to the individual. If you are not careful, your head will be removed. The head of John the Baptist can be removed. If John the Baptist don't know how to present the message, that head can be taken off his neck. Because the Bible said, John the Baptist went to Herod. The king actually did not want to kill John the Baptist, but it was the presentation. He got the revelation right, but the presentation of the revelation was wrong. So as a prophet, you can get the revelation right. You can get the, the interpretation right, but the application matters. So we have many prophets who have application problem. They do not know how to apply the message. They receive it all right, but they are eager to prophesy. So you see them prophesying doom. You see them saying it as the way they receive it. That is why a prophet with that wisdom can cause more harm than the devil. An immature prophet can destroy a family than the devil. I used to mention the names of witches. This person so so and so is, is behind this. But sometimes I discover that the more you are mentioning the, the names, you are, you are causing more distraction in that family. 
Because if I have seen a witch, I know who the witch is. I know how to relate with that witch. But another person don't know how to relate with that witch. The moment he sees and hears that this person is a witch, he's out to destroy. And that is the problem of so many things.